So up the front here, we've got your hitch and your A-frame. So when you're going to connect the van up to your vehicle, you reverse up, you can use the jockey wheel for raise and lower your hitch so you can line it up properly. When you lower it down onto your tow wheel, this black handle will lock down onto your tow wheel. And this little red button here will pop up and there'll be a green ring around here so you know that it's secured onto your tow wheel correctly. You can then push the secondary lever down there is some Alco brake pads in here that will squeeze in and lock onto your tow ball. You do have a breakaway cable. This is designed to loop around the tow ball and clip back onto itself. So that just sits underneath the hitch there so that if for some reason this hitch ever gave way, this breakaway cable will pull, it will snap off and it will put your handbrake on. Your handbrake, much like a car, push down for off and pull up for on. You do have a standard 7 pin trailer plug as well. So once that's all connected up, you need to get your jockey wheel out of the way. So you want to wind your jockey wheel up so it looks like it does now where these arms are slotted into these grooves on the side. That just stops your wheel from spinning around when you're towing it. You can then undo this handle and pull the whole jockey wheel up just so your wheel is resting against the A-frame. You either can then tighten it up out of the way. When you go to unhook at the campground when you've arrived, you'll do that in reverse. So undo that lever, drop the jockey wheel down, tighten it back up, lift the secondary lever. You then have to lift and hold this first lever while you wind your jockey wheel up. If you don't hold this lever up, it won't release your tow ball, it'll just start to pull your vehicle up with the van. Now your van is equipped with ATC, that's what we call active trailer control. And the way that works is there's sensors underneath the van that it will sense when the van is getting out of alignment with the vehicle and it'll break each wheel individually to bring it back in alignment. Now, to have this wired up, you do need to have this seven pin trailer plug wired as a 12 pin trailer plug. And you do also have to have your towing vehicle rewired by an auto electrician. If you get that done, when you hook that up to your vehicle, you will get a little green light here so you know it's turned on. Just behind that here, we've got your front locker. Now, when you open this, you'll hear it click periodically. Once it clicks, you need to let it go and then it'll rest. It will rest in place. If you click it up too high, it'll just release itself and drop back down. You've got space for two nine kilo gas bottles in the front here. Now, if for some reason you do want to shut your gas off entirely, you can just flip this little yellow lever so that will shut the gas off entirely just make sure you open it back up when you want to use it again when you're connecting up your gas bottles it's just a standard sort of spin on connection you do have your mains power cord here so this is for when you're plugging in at a campground and there is also your lead winder so this is to raise and lower the stabilizer steadies on each corner of the van you will find once you've got two gas bottles in here, it's unlikely this and your power cord will fit in here with them, but you do have some storage lockers on the side that you can pop these. In this locker, there is a little bit of a grate, so it is exposed to the elements, so you will get a little bit of dust and dirt in here, but you can just hose that out. So just on the side of your van here, this is one of the storage lockers, and then here you've got your onboard tank. So it's about 30 litres, so you just lift it up and slide it out. You just take this wee piece of hose out and you can go and fill it up and then pop that back in there when you get back to the van, just slide it all the way in. And you pop your tank in and just make sure it clips in behind this little black groove here just so it stays in place. Just down from those lockers here, this is the vent for when you're running your water heater on gas. You only need to take this travel cover off when you're actively running the water heater on gas. You will get some warm to hot air coming out of here, that's completely normal. But when you're not using the water heater and when you're towing the van, it's really important you put this cover back on. It stops any dust and dirt getting in here. It also stops spiders from crawling in here because they create webs that it really affects the emission of your water heater. So when you're not using it, just pop those two tabs on the top, give it a knock on the bottom and that'll keep it on. Just next to that here, this is your housing unit for your fresh water. So you've got your fresh water barrel, fill it right up to the top, bring it to the van, undo this top lid, drop your pump right down to the bottom, then it does only go on the one way, it corresponds to the van, you push that in, and it slots into the wee cap here so you can drop that down just to protect it. 
once you've got that hooked up you can then go inside and turn your water pump on these water barrels don't have a gauge and there's no gauge inside the van for the level of this so it's really important you keep an eye on it you don't want it to get sort of quarter of the way empty um, you do have a little piece of pipe on your pump i would recommend keeping that on it just stops the pump from curling up out of the water so it doesn't run dry without you knowing just behind your wheel here this little piece here is the outlet for your grey water so when you're going to connect your caddy you want to take this cap off you've got this grey water hose to connect it to the caddy into your van these cam locks are a little bit stiff because they're new but they will loosen up over time so you can pop that on you've then got a piece of pipe that goes on the end of your caddy for your breather once you've got that all hooked up you need to make sure all your valves are open so there's one on the breather one at the top and there's also a valve underneath the van here you do have a little gauge on the top so you can keep it on when this is getting full when it's getting full and you want to empty it make sure you close these valves and it's also a good idea to close the one underneath the van just stops any residual grey water in the system coming up onto the ground so you can unhook your grey water hose wheel your caddy away take that pipe off when you get to the dump station you can remove this cap on the bottom and you've got this little cap and spout so that'll give you a nice direct pull when you go to empty it you've also got a bungee cord in here this is so you can strap your toilet cassette to the top of the caddy if you want to empty them both at the same time or you can strap the caddy sort of around the wheel or around the chassis to stop it rolling around in the wind up on the rear corner of your van here this is the fresh water filler for your toilet flush so generally depending on the model it takes about 8 to 10 litres in here it is more of a visual reference so once you start to get water in this trough you'll know it's nice and full there is a pink toilet chemical that goes in here it helps with smell but it also helps lubricate all the seals inside your pump underneath here in this locker is your toilet cassette so when you go to remove this you'll need to lift it up over this little bridge and slide it out the items in this circle are operated inside the van so you don't need to worry about that when you go to empty it you'll spin your spout out if you're having a bit of trouble getting this cap off you do have an air release valve at the bottom here so you can press that a few times and then that cap should come off you can then empty out your toilet cassette there are some measurements on this cap here this is designed so that you can measure out the blue toilet chemical Again, it helps with smell, but it also helps break everything down so it's nice and easy to empty. So you can pop that in there. Your toilet caddy does have wheels on it, so you can lift this grey handle up over these grey tabs. And that way you can wheel it away. When you come back to the van, make sure your orange handle clips back in behind the grey tabs there. You can then slide it into the van and just make sure it locks in. The only other thing inside this locker is just up on a little shelf here above the toilet cassette is this little bung. This is designed that you pull this bung and it drains all the water out of your toilet flush. It's really important to do this when you're storing the van, especially over winter. It prevents any frost damage and it also stops your pump from seizing from being in water for a long time. So round on the door side of your van here, just next to your wheel, this locker has your battery in it. Um, it does its own thing, you don't really need to worry about it, but if you ever want to check it or change it, that's what it is. On the left here is where you plug in for your mains power. So you hold the cap back. There is a little groove on the cord here, which corresponds to the one on the van, so it does only go on the one way. So you can hold it back, give it a little wiggle, and then that'll plug in. There is a groove inside the locker and the door here. That is so you can pop your cord in there. This way you can lock this locker up, it keeps the weather out and it stops anyone being able to get to your battery. Just inside your door here is your sort of main control panel. So on the bottom left we've got your master switch, so that livens up all your 12 volt and it also livens up this little battery voltmeter at the top so you can keep an eye on that. Above that is the main switch for your lights, so any 12 volt lights that you've left on will turn on and off with that one. You've got your awning switch so that operates your awning light which is just outside the door and then underneath that here is for your water pump so once you've got your fresh water barrel all filled up and plugged in you can come inside and turn that water pump on you may find if you haven't used the van for a little while that you will have to open up all the taps just to get any residual 
air out of the system and then that'll pressurize and you'll be all good to go. So just up above your dresser area, sort of on the right as you come through the door, this control here is to operate your room heater on 240 volt. So you've got 2000 watts, 1000 watts and 500. Now I don't know if you would have seen it, but there's a little green light that flashes and then disappears. That green light is supposed to say solid, so if it's not staying solid you need to make sure that the isolator switch underneath here is turned on so that that green light is on. The inner dial is your temperature, so you can select from 1 right round to 9, and then it's just back to the circle for off. This here is your room heater unit. So up on the right hand side here is for your 12 volt fan. So the little circle in the middle is off. Up the top here, 1 to 5, is your fan speed. On the right hand side here for A, that's automatic. So there are some temperature sensors inside the heater here and it will automatically kick the fan in and out to maintain the temperature you've selected on either gas or 240 volt. On the left hand side here is continuous, so you can run the fan when you're using the heater on gas or 240 volt to circulate hot or warm air, or you can run the fan on its own and it'll circulate room temperature air. When the fan is on it circulates the heat through the little ducts in and around the van, on the left hand side here is to run your room heater on gas. So when you go to ignite it, normally you want to turn it up quite high. Your temperature dial is also your purge button, so you're going to push and hold that in. While you're holding that, you want to hit the igniter next to it. While you're doing that, you'll need to look through this little viewfinder here. Generally about this far down and about 25 mils in, there's a piece of glass that matches the shape of this. So once you get the angle right, while you're holding the purge button and hitting that igniter, you should see a blue flame and then once you release that purge button, it should kick into a nice bright orange flame. You can then adjust your temperature from there. When you go to turn it off on gas, you want to go to the zero and then push the dial ever so slightly past that like you're going back round towards the 10 and that'll shut your room heater off on gas. Up above your kitchen sink here, these are the controls for your water heater. So to run your water heater on gas, you'll want to flick it to the little flame, you'll get the green light and you'll hear a click underneath the front seat, that's your water heater trying to ignite. The inside dial is your temperature, so you've got 30 right round to 70. As you can see, we've had a red light come up, that means that the water heater has failed to ignite on gas, so we need to turn that off. Go and check our gas bottles are connected properly, check they've still got enough gas in them and also check that the travel cover on the outside has been removed. Once you've checked those three things you can then come inside, turn this back on and it should be good to go. Underneath that here is for if you're wanting to run your water heater on 240 volt. So you just need to turn that on and your water heater will start to heat up on 240. So just underneath your front seating here, this grey unit is your water heater. Um, it'll do its own thing based on the controls you've selected up above. There is a little yellow lever here. When you are storing the van, again especially over winter, you need to come in and flick this up as well as open up all your taps. So this is going to drain all the water out of your hot water heater and also you get any residual water out of the system. So it's going to help prevent frost damage in the van. When you go to use the van again make sure you flick it down, it doesn't matter which way you flick it down, just so that when you go to use your fresh water again it's not going to drain it straight out the bottom of the van. On the right hand side here this little lever operates where you want to use your fresh water from. So in the position it is now it means that when you turn your pump on you're going to be getting water from the water barrel outside the van. When you are wanting to use water from the little onboard tank there, you need to turn this valve 90 degrees, so it's facing that way, and that means it's going to be taking the water out of your little onboard tank. This here is the controls for your fridge. So up on the left here we've got your sort of mode selector, so we've got gas, 240 volt and battery. Now, as long as you've got your 240 volt plugged in, the fridge will start to cool down. For battery, you need to have that 12 pin trailer plug, which an auto electrician can wire up for you. And what this mode is designed to do is it's designed to maintain the temperature the fridge is currently at while you tow the vehicle. That means you have to cool the fridge down on either 240 volt or gas. 
the night before and then when you hook up the van you can switch it to battery and it'll maintain that temperature it will not cool the fridge down from warm the fridge already has to be cold so that is an additional option you can have wired up if you like full gas you're going to flick it to gas and then come over to the right hand side so this little dial is your thermostat for how cold you want the fridge to be it is also the purge button when you're using the fridge on gas you're going to push and hold this purge button in while you're holding that purge button you're going to hit this igniter so we're holding the purge button hitting the igniter and then we're keeping a little eye on this indicator here so hopefully you can see it but there's a little sort of needle there in the orange while we're holding the purge button and hitting the igniter this is going to creep up into the green once it's in the green and it's holding its position steadily, you can stop hitting the igniter and release the purge button. If it stays in the green, that means your fridge has ignited on gas. If it starts to drop down back into the orange, you just need to push and hold that purge button again, hit the igniter a few times and just let it steady itself. And then your fridge will be all good to go on gas. And to turn your fridge off, it's just back to the little zero there. Here we have your elements, your grill and your oven. So there is an igniter on the front of your oven here that ignites the oven, the grill and the elements. So up the top here, you wanna push that glass back as far as it'll go. So you've got four elements, they all run off gas. Very much like a barbecue, you're gonna push, turn and hold at the highest flame, hit that igniter on the front of the oven. And then once it's lit, you can adjust your temperature from there and back to the zero for off. So you've got two controls on each side. When you're finished using these elements, it's really important that you make sure that they and the little wires are cool to the touch because it has been known in the past, if you put that glass down when it's still hot, it will shatter the glass. For your grill here, it's the control on the left. So you want to push, turn and hold, hit that igniter and then adjust your flame from there. Your grill will ignite along this little cylinder rail down the middle. And then for your oven, so on the right hand side, push, turn and hold, hit the igniter and adjust from there. And your oven will ignite along that little silver rail at the back there. Here we have the inside of your toilet. So your toilet bowl does rotate. So you can pop it right out the way if you're using the vanity or the shower. And then you can adjust it to fit your legs in. Up the top here, there is a little picture of a cassette, so there will be a wee light that will start to flash at you when that's getting full. And the big blue button here is your toilet flush. So when you're using the flush, it'll flush from the back into the toilet. When you go to empty the toilet, there's a little grey lever here, so when you push it back towards the wall, that opens up your toilet cassette. And then when you slide it forward, that'll close it off. It's really important when you're finished using the toilet that you close it. Um, there is a seal in there so that all seals up and helps prevent smell. But your toilet cassette will not remove out of the locker if the toilet is open on the inside. So you can open it up, flush everything away and then just make sure that you've definitely closed it. If you go to remove your toilet cassette and feel a little bit of resistance, just jump in the van and make sure it's closed on the inside. With your bathroom window here, there's actually two different types of window stay so it's a little bit tricky so this one here you just lift straight up and it opens out whereas this one on the side it won't just lift straight up there is a little button here so you have to press that button in before it'll release and then your toilet or your bathroom window will open and then when you close it you don't have to press the button you can just close it as normal with your big roof light in the front here these are what they call a hehe two um, so when you want to open your hehe, you again you want to press the button in before you rotate that stay. If you just pull the stay without pushing the button in, it will break. So make sure you push that in and rotate it round. You then pull the lever down towards you and push the roof light up. Now you can leave it, you can click the handle back and leave it fully open like so. Or you can pull it down a little bit and just sit it on those little pieces and clip it in just so it doesn't fly up on you and so you can just leave it cracked a little bit just to let some fresh air in and then you can just release that push it back up pull it down rotate the handle round 
and again you can then just slide these round you don't have to push the button when you're going to close them